Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hi everyone. Welcome to the introduction to uh, point of care ultrasound series. So this is the first video. Uh, today we're going to talk about how ultrasound probes work. Uh, what types of uh, ultrasound probes are usually used uh, for the internal medicine. Uh, and then the third is the uh, principle of acoustic impedance. Okay, so let's start. Um, in this series, I have to say, I don't have any um, uh, disclosures to mention, uh, just because uh, I'm using the uh, point of uh, the butterfly device. Um, it doesn't mean like I have any uh, relationship with the company. I, I don't really work for them. Um, I don't have any other relationship with them, uh, apart from the uh, the fact that I'm, I'm just used to it. And uh, I used the V-Scan also before, and I also liked it. So I don't have any other um, particular um, preference of one device over the other, uh, because I only have used two of them so far. OK, so uh, I'm not going to get into the details of physics of it. Uh, I'm just going to explain it in a kind of a simple way. Uh, how do you get the image that you get when you uh, pick up your ultrasound device and go and scan a patient or someone. So basically start by the machine sending uh, some electric activity. Uh, that electric activity will go to the uh, the piezoelectric crystals. So that's uh, the mechanism by which most of the ultrasound operate. And uh, that the function of this piezoelectric crystals is to convert uh, this electric activity into uh, ultrasound activity. So the ultrasound beams will um, travel from the probe and it goes all the way to the target. And then depending on the acoustic impedance of that tissue, we'll talk about that later, and other factors, you know, some of uh, these uh, ultrasound beams will be reflected back to the probe. Of course, some of the beams will also be uh, refracted. Some of it will be uh, absorbed. But uh, for the sake of this explanation, here's like some of these uh, beams being reflected back to the probe, and they will go back to uh, the piezoelectric crystals. And again, these piezoelectric crystals will convert them back into electric activity. And this time, the electric activity will go to the screen and convert these um, into the images that you usually see on the ultrasound. So this is really kind of a simple explanation, you know, how do you get the image that you get. Now, one thing about the butterfly uh, uh, um, mechanism is that it actually uses uh, the, a chip uh, instead of the piezoelectric crystals. And maybe uh, the company claims that's why probably one of the reasons that's why the price was um, uh, low when it when they launched the Butterfly IQ in 2017. But of course, there's other really other good uh, handheld ultrasound devices. I have used the VSCAN before uh, for a couple of years. Uh, I, um, there is also this Clarius device that have been used it before. And then there's uh, the Lumify also, it's another handheld device, but also having used it before, but I, you know, some of my colleagues mentioned that there's had also good images. So uh, I'm not sure actually exactly how these two work. I, I, I still believe that probably operate by the b b piezoelectric crystals. I know that VSCAN uh, does that, but I'm not sure about these two. So this is, this is just, um, you know, kind of uh, examples of how some of the handheld ultrasound devices and how they operate. Okay, so what about the types of probes? Uh, here I'm going to talk about the ones that are used mostly by uh, intramedicine. So there are mainly three of them. Uh, the, this is the linear uh, probe, and it's called linear because of the shape uh, of the probe itself. Uh, it's also called a high-frequency probe. Um, because it's uh, uh, the frequency is higher than the frequency of the other probes, as we will see. And uh, from physics, the the high frequency probe, the the, uh, the higher the frequency of the ultrasound beams, means that they can really go um, uh, in uh, like a lot of depths. So it's kind of maybe you can call it like the shallow probe as well. So the depth is like maximally or like you know uh, close to nine centimeters eight to nine centimeters and this uh, this is how the image looks it's like a triangular in shape and uh, it has a lot of uh, useful um, exams including examination of the arteries and veins 
Uh, you can use it, for example, for insertion of peripheral IV access. Um, also, you can do it for uh, procedures, um, again, like insertion of the center line. Um, you can also use it to examine the pleura when you're doing like lung ultrasound. You can use it for skin and soft tissue infections, looking for a deeper abscess. If someone is presenting with some features, clinical features of uh, skin and soft tissue infection or cellulitis. Also for the musculoskeletal examination, patient with trauma, suspicion was uh, of um, fractures, tendon rupture, um, and this kind of uh, musculoskeletal utilities. Also for examination of testicular, um, or examination of testes or uh, um, hernia, uh, examination of the eye, and sometimes you, in medicine, you can use it to look for signs of, or features of increased intraocular pressure. And um, uh, I mean, uh, in increase intracellular pressure by looking at the um, the, uh, the disc, the optic disc fullness, looking for like papilledema, um, and also for examination of the breast. So this is the linear probe. It's very useful for use uh, for internal medicine. The other two are uh, shallow, uh, the kind of, uh, shallow probes or low frequency probe, you know, the their uh, frequency is much less uh, than the high frequency probe uh, or the linear probe. Uh, and because of that, usually if you have a low frequency ultrasound beam, they can go uh, deeper. Uh, so uh, up to 30 or 35 centimeters. And uh, uh, the difference between the two is that the cardiac, the face array or the cardiac probe it's actually because the, most of the beams, they um, get emitted from one point. It's actually, this is very advantageous to look for the heart because you can use these beams to uh, get into between the ribs and look into the underlying heart. That's why it's called the cardiac, cardiac uh, probe or face array uh, probe. The cavilinear probe is also known as the abdominal probe, and this is the classic one that we use for examination of the abdominal organs, like the gallbladder, the liver, the kidney, the bladder, abdominal aorta, and ascites or uh, free fluid, uh, um, uterus and ovaries as well. Um, but you can actually use the cardiac probe for these examinations too. Uh, and then the cardiac probe again is mainly cardiac, so we use it uh, to look for the heart, uh, the IVC, also to examine the lungs, especially at the back or the basis. You can use it also for examination of the pleura, but if you want more details, the shallow probe or the uh, linear or uh, high frequency probe might be better. But also because it's low frequency probe, you can also use it for examination of the abdominal organs as well. So these three are the really kind of the main probes that we use for internal medicine. Uh, there is, of course, other uh, types of probe that are used for other um, uh, clinical use, uh, like the transvaginal probe, for example. And of course, uh, ultrasound can be used with uh, a lot of uh, uh, internal medicine subspecialties as well, like you know, endoscopic ultrasound, for example. One thing I like about the uh, butterfly that I uh, um, currently have is, you know, that you have all these probes in one device, so you can just switch. Uh, from one to another uh, using the uh, your cell phone or the iPad or um, and then you can just change the frequency so that's that's that comes really handy and I found it really useful um, uh, for that purpose okay so uh, we're gonna talk about the acoustic impedance so basically uh, you can define it by um, the fact that it's the physical property of tissue in the term in terms of how much uh, that tissue resists ultrasound beams that are passing uh, through the tissue. So um, we talked before about uh, basic physics and we mentioned that when the ultrasound beams they travel um, from the ultrasound to the target what happens after that really depend on the ac acoustic impedance. So for example um, fluid uh, like in blood for example um, they tend to absorb most of the ultrasound beams uh, that get into them from the probe. Yes, they might reflect some of them, but most of them get um, uh, absorbed and they pass through. They don't get uh, reflected back to the probe, uh, to the most part. And that's why the um, ultrasound probe will not 
kind of be like will be to be like blinded from seeing it and in a way that will show up as a black uh, structure and that's called anechoic structure so blood vessels most of the time with ultrasound they look anechoic that's the kind of the ultrasound term that we use which basically means black this for example here this is the IJ and this is a coronary artery and both of them are black uh, if you want to do like a central line in this patient for example that's how it, that's how it looks uh, the tissues around them as you can tell uh, like for example subcutaneous so tissues it's not really as black and that's because some of these uh, uh, tissue they actually reflect part of the ultrasound beams uh, but they still appear a little bit close to black in some ways so that's called like hypoechoic structures so hypoechoic structures they uh, st still absorb a lot of the ultrasound beams they, but they reflect you know uh, some of them as well sometimes the amount of um, uh, beam that are absorbed and reflected might be close to each other and that structure uh, which does that will appear isoechoic. So for example the liver here is said to be kind of isoechoic. It's not, it's not black, it's not white um, and some, uh, some of them might be a little bit um, wider and that's called hyperechoic and hyperechoic structures like the diaphragm for example uh, in this image here um, the ultrasound is said to be hyper uh, equate because it uh, reflects back a lot of the ultrasound beams uh, compared to the other tissues. Now, the probably the structure with the highest uh, uh, density uh, and most hyper uh, by ultra uh, with ultrasound um, uh, image is uh, bone and stones. If you see them, so for example, this is a, a, a bone and this is showing showing a fracture here. As you can tell, the bone is really very hyper echoic, and there is a shadow behind the bone, and that's because you know the structure behind behind uh, the the bone they, not, they don't really get um, uh, any or uh, they only get few ultrasound beams. Most of the beams uh, are already reflected back to the ultrasound probe, and that's why uh, bone appears uh, bright, uh, maybe even more bright than the diaphragm here. Uh, of course, we will talk about the brightness and how can you increase or decrease that. But these are the kind of the uh, terms that we use when we talk about acoustic impedance. Some structures are anechoic, some are hypoechoic, some are isoechoic, and um, some are hyperechoic. Uh, so that's that's kind of a summary of what acoustic uh, impedance means.